I am just done with your laziness, to be honest, and I am gonna take it upon myself to make sure you do not go through another year not being your best self. As always, here are the video chapters. Don't forget all of my socials, my second YouTube channel, and my podcast with exclusive self-help advice episodes are all linked below in the description. If you've been here for a while and you feel like we're besties, you can check out my Snapchat, which is also linked below in the description. You just get BTS of my daily life. Why not? This video has also kindly been brought to you by Squarespace. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Squarespace is an all-in-one online platform that helps entrepreneurs stand out and succeed online. If you've been thinking about your 2024 goals and you're like, I kind of want to be a business owner, you know, I want an extra stream of income, Squarespace is going to help you do that. They make it super easy for you to create a beautiful website with one of their templates to engage your audience and to sell absolutely anything all in one place on your own terms on their platform. Let's get right into the video with chapter one. Now, my my goal with this video is to make it as short and concise as possible because we both know you have a hella short attention span. Mindset shift number one. There is someone else out there with the exact same goal as you that is working harder than you right now. And you know why? Because they have more self-respect. They know if they just put in the work now, regardless of how they feel, they're doing a favor for their future self. And while you're just laying around paying more attention to how you feel in the moment, they're out there hustling and creating a whole life for themselves. Mindset shift number two, dreams don't work unless you do. You are responsible for making that vision in your head a reality. No one is out here trying to make life easier for you. It is actually up to the amount of self-love you have that's going to show how much you are willing to show up for yourself. Just remember that you betray yourself every single time you decide to neglect taking a step towards fulfilling your full potential. Three, the path of laziness only has one outcome and that's regret. Four, your younger self is counting on you and your future self is talking shit about you. That's right, your future self is currently talking shit about you and judging you, saying, oh my God, I never used to work hard. Oh my God, I never knew what I was doing. It is your job to prove them wrong today. And lastly, mindset shift number five, failure is just not even trying in the first place. Imagine yourself in five years not only being upset at the fact that you're not where you wanted to be and that you failed in your dreams, but also knowing everyone else around you got exactly where they needed to be and got ahead of you simply because they got comfy with the idea of failing and then getting back up again. Trying things and them not succeeding is inevitable. It happens to literally everyone. It's happened to the richest people on this planet. That is just a part of the journey. Not trying in the first place is the worst thing you can do for yourself. Chapter two, lazy girl productivity hacks. One, the reason you can't focus is because you want too many things. Succeeding is now perceived as a daunting and impossible task to you just because you're thinking about too much. Once you simplify it, you'll be able to achieve consistently and efficiently. And I say this about everything. Let's take a New Year's resolution, for example. Your resolution cannot be have a six-figure business in 2024. That's literally sounds so impossible and so overwhelming. So instead, we need to break it down into baby steps. If we move that into a tiny goal, we'll feel more satisfied with ourselves, we'll raise our confidence and our self-esteem because now we are easily contributing to the bigger goal every single day and actually succeeding with every step we do. January, register for the domain, set up the website, order in the inventory. February, finish all of the social media marketing posts, batch the social media, um, do some photo shoots with some models for the website. March, try and do your first pop-up shop. Do some courses about online marketing. You see what I've done there? Now, instead of this overarching goal that you don't even know how to get to, it just becomes easy tasks that you can do once a week. Lazy girl productivity hack number two, you need a driving force. We procrastinate and we don't get our work done because it's like, what's the point? Okay, and I used to feel like this throughout school and uni. I had no driving force. I had no motivation because I didn't have the why behind why I was doing all of this work. So when you're setting a goal, it shouldn't just be to get an A in that test or make a certain amount of money or to have a certain job promotion. You need to pair those goals with a why. It's to retire my parents, to have financial freedom, to one day travel the world, to get into my dream university, to live this particular lifestyle, network with these people, to give back to the community. What is your drive? What is your purpose? What is your mission? So basically, you need to take yourself out of the equation when you're thinking about your goals and instead think about a cause or a lifestyle you are trying to serve instead. Then, oh my God, I have to study for like three hours today becomes, oh my God, if I study for three hours today, I'll get the grade I need to get the scholarship I want to move to my dream city in my dream school. 
Productivity hack number three, lists will save your life because they most definitely save mine. I have a list for my grocery shop. I plan my day in my calendar hour by hour. Even like I'll even plan out my dinner breaks, my lunch breaks. I have a list in my notes app of things that make me feel good versus things that make me feel bad so that I can fix up my mental health super easily and hold myself accountable every day. The reason all of this works is because it adds urgency. Now, every single day I wake up and I know exactly what needs to get done and I know the time frame in which it needs to get done. So then I'm not sitting around scrolling and thinking, hmm, what should I do? It's, oh my God, I need to get this done within the next 30 minutes or else I'm gonna fall behind on everything else I need to get done right after that. Lists in general are just so good because they keep you so efficient. Like you're not gonna go to the grocery store and procrastinate for an hour thinking, oh my God, you know, should I buy this? Is this healthy enough? Blah, blah, blah. No, you're gonna sit down for one hour literally on a random day, you're going to do all the research you need on the foods you need to buy that are going to help your skin, your body, whatever lifestyle you want. You write it in your notes and you buy those same foods every week. Same for all of the tasks you need to get done in a week. I plan this ahead every single Sunday. I look at the goals I've written for the year and I turn those into micro steps that I can incorporate into this week. Then I'm going throughout every single day this week. I don't think about what I'm getting done. I don't think about if I'm doing enough. I don't think about if I'm contributing to my New Year's resolutions. I did all that thinking. On, for an hour on Sunday. And now I'm automatically doing everything. Everything is an easily flowing system. The next hack is to make it enjoyable. If you struggle with productivity, this is gonna be the best step for you. For example, when I was in university studying a degree I absolutely hated and all I wanted to do was drop out, but my family didn't let me. I had no choice but to make it enjoyable. So every day I woke up, I put on the cutest outfit, okay? Now that is making me confident, it's making me feel myself and it's making me excited to step out of my accommodation and go out into a cafe to work. I go to an aesthetic cafe, which I like being in, or I go to the library because seeing other people sitting there with their laptops doing their work motivates and pressures me to get my work done. A few years ago, I was never a big reader. Nowadays, I read every single day and I love every single second of it. And the way that I got from point A to B is, I would romanticize it. So I would go on Pinterest and I made boards that romanticized things that I didn't like. So I had one Pinterest board about uni, you know, like the studying aesthetic, Rory Gilmore vibes, straight A student core. And then I had another one about like a girl reading in a cafe, books to read, books that make you more intelligent, books that teach you about the world. And I looked at other people living out that lifestyle and it made it more attractive to me, which then encouraged me to just get on and do it. The thing with living a lazy girl lifestyle is we do it because we're addicted to a lifestyle of ease. So really what we have to do is turn our goals lifestyle into something of ease and enjoyment. Romanticizing it and shifting our perception of it is gonna help with that. Every single day, when I was like 16, I had my final exams in school, I would come home, I would dread having to study and revise, and this one step saved me. I would immediately go onto YouTube. There was a studying YouTuber, I can't remember their name, but they would like, their face wasn't even in it. They were just doing a time lapse of them studying. I would watch it for 20 minutes. In those 20 minutes, my entire perception had shifted. And now I felt so pressured and so motivated to study in the exact same way because I saw somebody else do it. Lazy girl productivity hack number five, the Pomodoro timer or the three minute rule. You can choose either of these, whatever works best for you. If you don't know what Pomodoro timer is, Google it, it's a free timer. So it will time you to do 20 minutes of work and then a five minute break. 20 minutes of work, then a five minute break. And it makes like studying for five hours much more tolerable. On the other hand, if you find 20 minutes of work way too much, then all you have to do is tell yourself, I'm gonna go to my desk, I'm gonna open my laptop, and I'm gonna do whatever task I need to do for three minutes. That is it, for three minutes. Set a timer on your phone for three minutes, do the task, and then when the three minutes is done, you have the option to either stop doing the task and do something different, or continue on with the task. Nine times out of 10, once the three minutes is done, you're gonna continue doing the task because nine times out of 10, the reason that we procrastinate and we can't commit to our goals or our work is just the process of starting it in the first place. Productivity hack number six, remove all distractions. Let's take your phone, for example, because that's all of our biggest distractions. You're gonna shut it down, or you're gonna let it die and not charge it, or you're gonna give it to a friend. You don't have to work once you give your phone away. Just sit, just sit without it. Make sure you're in a room where there's no TV or no other devices. And just the boredom of sitting there is gonna make you just get up and get on with your task. If you don't have that distraction in your hand in the first place, you're gonna have nothing to do but just get on with your work. So that at the end of the day, you can actually do everything else you want to do. I know for me, the only way I will get work done efficiently without procrastinating is if I know I have a reward waiting for me at the end of that day. Lazy girl hack seven, habit stack. Essentially, we're gonna take baby steps and choose the easiest route for you. 
This is about making your brand new routine as easy and accessible for you as possible and building it up through those baby steps to increase your tolerance to this new lifestyle so then eventually you can start adding new habits to it throughout. For example, you wake up and all you want to do is scroll on TikTok easy. Go to the gym, walk on a treadmill, you can scroll on TikTok the entire time. You want to sit on FaceTime and catch up with your friend for an hour? Fine, go ahead, do it. But while you're doing it, iron your clothes, do your laundry. That way you're building up your tolerance where you're actually getting everything you need to get done, but it won't feel like a chore because you're getting some enjoyment out of it as well. Lazy girl hack eight, the right environment. When I wake up and I can't be bothered to get out of bed and I just want to scroll, I scroll. I let myself scroll, but I scroll through the right things. In my TikTok app, I have a favorites folder called motivation. Every single motivational video I've ever come across, I save it in that folder. In the morning when I wanna be cozy and I just wanna be on my phone, instead of going through my for you page, instead of seeing what celebrities are up to, I go through that folder and I'm scrolling. So I have the comfort of doing what I want to do, but it's having this effect on me where now I'm getting motivated as a result. I have a video on my channel called Watch This When You Need Motivation for a reason, okay? The days you wake up and you don't wanna get out of bed, watch that, I promise you, midway through the video, you're gonna be up. The next lazy girl hack is dopamine addiction. You feel so overwhelmed with the thought of everything you need to get done and all of your work that you seek out dopamine through sources like TV or social media. In order to work more consistently and more successfully, you need to replace that fake dopamine because social media does nothing but actually ruin your mental health the more you use it with real dopamine sources. Things like sunlight, exercise, music, dancing, friends, self-care. Phase out the devices and bring in your personal happiness rituals. It's gonna be different for everybody. It could be a walk in the morning. It could be, literally, I used to lock myself in my bedroom when I was living with my family. I would put my music on blast in my headphones. I would dance around my room like an absolute child. Did it not bring out all of my happy hormones and I felt so much better to get on with the day? Yes. It's that satisfaction element that you need and that's never gonna come from endless scrolling. The next lazy girl hack is stop striving for perfection and start striving for completion. For example, you just have to put your gym clothes on. That's it. You don't have to lose 10 pounds. You don't have to spend two hours in the gym. You don't have to be there at five o'clock in the morning. Just put the gym clothes on. Once they're on, you're gonna leave your house and you're gonna go to the gym and that's it then you've taken a step towards fulfilling your potential, towards becoming your best self because you went to the gym and you moved your body and that is it and that is good enough. Sometimes we build up these goals and these dreams so big in our head that the pressure makes us procrastinate. Same goes for if you're like, I wanna set up a six figure business. No, you don't. You just have to register for the website and organize the inventory, that's it. Now you're already on the journey to getting that full outcome, but you can tell yourself, I've made progress and I had a successful day because I did those two steps. That big end goal you have is always gonna come naturally when you take the next suitable step in your journey. And the last lazy girl productivity hack is to make tasks less icky to boost productivity. My biggest recommendation with this is to use services to do all the hard lifting for you. We live in a world of social media and chat GPT and loads of productivity hacks. And so gone are the days of having to do every single thing yourself, meaning we now have the privilege of being able to work smarter and not harder. A really small example of this is I wanna look after my financial future and I wanna be financially free and I wanna be a girlie who's in her investing bag. So I have all of these apps in place and all of these standing orders in my bank account. I don't think about it again. Every single month, a certain amount of money leaves my account to go into other investing accounts and everything gets done for me because everything is just automated and I have all of the apps in place. Another example is if you want to set up a business, that's not hard. You don't have to go to uni to take a degree to learn how to set up a business, guys. You don't have to read a bunch of textbooks because the platforms that you can use to set up a business teach you how to do it anyway. The task of utilizing email marketing to grow your brand and having an active customer base is now less icky because you go into Squarespace, they have all of the email marketing templates you need and they collect all of the customer base email addresses you would ever need. I am literally a living example of this right now. As 2023 is coming to an end, of course, I've already written out my 2024 goals. And one of them is to really get into entrepreneurship. I've had my experience with it in the past, but I didn't run it as efficiently as I could. So I'm spending these last few weeks of the year on Squarespace, experimenting with merch stores, with email marketing, with blogging, with scheduling appointments with potential clients. 
and it's so much easier than when I started out this time last year. So I'm currently in the process of experimenting with creating a few online courses, seeing if maybe that's something I wanted to offer you guys, maybe creating some custom merch with the built-in services that Squarespace offers you. So honestly, you have no excuse to be staying in your lazy girl era when being an entrepreneur is this easy. You can check it out for yourself at squarespace.com and get yourself a free trial. And when that free trial is finished, you can head back to this video, check out the link in my description where you will receive 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Chapter number three, the key to discipline. This is a short one, okay? Because it's really not complicated. Lazy people are lazy because they're addicted to comfort. Whereas discipline is the addiction and the obsession with discomfort. Discipline is all to do with your brain and your brain is addicted to comfort because it's constantly in survival mode. Your brain is constantly running on the process of scanning things for danger in your environment. So if anything gives you anxiety, or if anything seems difficult or is worrying you, it's going to give you all these difficult emotions, which is going to prevent you from going out to do that task. As a result, you no longer step out of your comfort zone to do things that are unfamiliar or uneasy. So yes, that's right, our brain is kind of against us, but the good news is we can train it. So really, it's as easy as ignoring what your brain is saying to you because you understand that it can't help but feel terrified at the thought that this is an unfamiliar venture that we have never done before. You push past that feeling and you try it anyway. And even though it's gonna be really hard and you're not gonna enjoy it and it's not gonna be easy, guess what? Once you've done it, your brain now has that little bit more of tolerance. That means the next time you have to do something that's outside of your comfort zone, your brain is a little bit more on your side you go out and you do it anyway more tolerance more tolerance more tolerance and it builds up and it builds up and it builds up you are only in your lazy girl era now because you love comfort to become somebody who loves discomfort you need to completely switch who you are you need to identify with a whole other persona the solution here is you can't keep living as who you have been this entire time because it got you to a place where you had to start watching this video to quit your bad habits you now need to identify as the sort of person who would never want to stay in bed for three hours because that in itself is an ick and that brings us to the last chapter, number four, the homework chapter. These are actionable steps that you need to be doing today so that you can start your journey. Task number one, get real about what you want and prioritize it. The thing that prevents us from being productive is that we're thinking about too much. We desire too much, right? So my question to you is, if someone told you you could only achieve one thing this month, what would it be? Task number two, plan out the next seven days of your life according to the goals you need to accomplish in order to be your highest self. Task number three, this is optional depending on how your brain operates, but create lists, okay? If you have a morning routine, write it down. It makes it flow so much easier in your brain. Task four, create your productivity environment. Make those Pinterest boards romanticizing your dream life so that on the days that you feel ungrateful and that you don't wanna live the life that you have, you can romanticize it and you see the enjoyment in it. And finally, homework task number five, implement one service. I want you to go on the app store, type in finance apps, if that's what you struggle with, okay? Sign up to Squarespace via the link in the description if you wanna be a business owner. You got this. You are gonna be able to step into January 1st, 2024, a whole new person. I know you are. Tag me on your Instagram stories and prove to me that you did it because I would love to see. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.